Good evening, fans, and welcome to another exciting Channel 22 sports presentation. In fact, we are indeed enjoying a first in Channel 22 sports history as we are here in the quarterfinal round of the 2003 CIF Southern Section Playoffs. I'm Rufus Washington, joined as always by Dave Marks as we welcome the Temecula Valley, and we happily welcome them uh, to Lusinger High School, Lou House, as they take on the Olympians tonight, as the Olympians continue their march, their first ever march day, to a Southern Section title. They've made two steps already, there are three steps left. This is step number three. Dave, your assessment of Lusinger's chances tonight as they take on a Temecula Valley team that upset heavily favored Fontana on Tuesday night. Well, thank you very much, Rufus. I, both teams coming in off of what you could consider a mile to massive upsets, losing her Olympians, and at the buzzer win on a block shot by Demetrius Doby against Long Beach Poly Jackrabbits, the defending CIF uh, Southern Section Division one AA champions, and of course, Temecula Valley knocking off Fontana in overtime by one point, and they had to come from 17 points down at one point in that game to do it. It's going to be a tough contest for losing her and that uh, the Temecula team, they, first of all, they had to travel a long way, but they are a team that does have some height. They can go with the front line of David Hodge, who will start at center tonight, who's six foot eight. They've got a couple other big people they can bring off the bench. And for those of you who saw the Long Beach Poly telecast, you remember at some certain stages of that game, Long Beach Poly Jackrabbits were killing losing her off the offensive glass. If losing her is going to be successful tonight, they're going to have to get off to a composed start, and that is something their head coach, Reggie Morris Jr., was concerned about. He didn't think they practiced too well. They didn't look too enthused on the layup line. And even though they are at home tonight, they are at home and avoided a 95-mile trip and an almost two-hour trip to Temecula Valley, they have to get off well, and they've got to play composed and within themselves. One thing I can report on Rufus is he says the health of the team is, is fairly good, and that should be good news for fans of Dorrell Wright who will jump at center tonight. All right, well, there you see it on your screen, fans. We are preparing for the center jump. Our officials for tonight's contest come from the San Fernando League. It is Bob Rappaport and Dennis Lockyer. That's gonna be Dennis Lockyer stepping in to do the cost. Losing it will be moving toward the left basket. Actually, from our vantage point here would be the northern basket. They control the opening tip as it goes over to Kelsey Bars, number 12. We'll set the losing lineup for you right now. We've got on the floor for the Olympians, no surprise, number 10, Myron Terrell. Number two, Sheldon Wilson. You've got Kelsey Bars, as I mentioned, that's Dorel right shot from three-point range, doesn't go. And also, Demetrius Doby, who had the big block. Demetrius got a lot of play in this week's paper. Our early call is a charge against Temecula Valley. They go by the Golden Bears fans. I know we haven't seen them, you haven't seen them. But you'll notice they're clad in the black and gold with bears on the side panel. Well, they saw a big David Hodge starting at center tonight. That's a key matchup, David Hodge and Doral Wright, depending on what sort of defensive sets they run. Temecula Valley starts Ray Segismar in the backcourt along with Ross Green, who was the All-Southwestern Conference player, All-Southwestern League player of the year. Nice fake there by Terrell, excuse me, by um, Doral Wright. Shot goes long, so... Dorel Wright not yet having found his eye. 0 for 2. We're still early first quarter action fans. We're just underway. This is a quarterfinal game. And we got to tell you, it's been a great game. There's pressure by the Olympians. Dorel Wright is moving with a lot of, lot of zip tonight, Dave. Looks like he, he is okay. I spoke to him myself earlier in the game, asked him how, how was the hip and back, and he said he was fine. And that should spell good news for losing her fans as you see Ray Sigismar, who plays a point guard, Ross Green in the backcourt, David Hodge, the center, and uh, also on the front line, Stuart Shepard and Tyler Combs for Temecula Valley. And that shot goes off the hands of one of the Golden Bears. It'll be losing the ball coming in. Both teams just a tad tight so far, as you can see. 
evidenced by a scoreless contest so far. We're over a minute into it. Right down on the low post. Right spins, right puts it up off the glass and in. So, Dorel Wright gets the first two of the game and now we've got a foul that's gonna be called on number 12, Kelsey Bars. You know, something happened off the ball. Well, the bucket counts for Dorel Wright, but uh, the referees seeing Kelsey Bars do something okay. in there. What we have is a delay of game, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, touched the ball after it came through the net. It's an old trick, one that I've taught my guys. Here we go again. Good ball handled by the small guy, number three. That's Sega's mark. Nice spin move put up by number 15. It doesn't go. Darrell Wright cleans up the board, pushes it up himself. Nice spin move. Goes through the middle. Dipsy do. Doesn't go, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Darrell Wright has come out tonight determined, I think, to show Temecula Valley that he's 100%, Dave. Well, the way he's playing right now, of course, he jumps at center. At his height, uh, these days, of course, uh, he, he's a six foot seven. They, they have him listed at six foot seven. That's basically a point guard in the NBA <laughs> right, right now as uh, players just, uh, guards just seem to get bigger and bigger. But he's showing he has the ability to play not only in the post, but on the wing as well. And Wright has all four losing her points as they lead early, six nothing. We've got six minutes left in the first quarter. Fans, we're just underway. Tuesday night, I told you when we played Polly, it was gonna be a great one from the opening bell to the final whistle. That's what it was. I think you can expect the same kind of action here tonight. Fortunately, we're at Lou House, as I said before. All of us, everybody who's a part of losing their program, that three-pointer put up and in by number 41. That's Stuart Shephard. Nonetheless, we're glad, Dave, and and, and I can't tell you how much that we didn't have to make the trip, but instead, uh, Temecula made the trip up here. Now we got a tie up, loose, uh, and possession arrow points to Temecula, so it'll be their ball with 540 left as we have one of our first substitutes coming on. We'll see who that is. We see that Donnell Wright has come on. I can't see who went off. Kelsey Barras went off. Foul's gonna be there on Myron Terrell. Terrell you see in the screen there, number 10. Another shot of Coach Reggie Morris as well. Temecula Valley, even though it's 90, 100 miles from here, they brought up a pretty decent crowd, Dave. Yes, they did. They, I spoke to some of them. They said it took them a little over two hours to get here because they stopped at a mall. Ball comes off, controlled by Temecula. Losing showing great defense. Let's see if they get the call on. If they give this on Terrell, that's gonna be Terrell's second foul. Well, something I notice here, we're uh, talking about the fact that Dorrell Wright has taken things into his hand offensively. Now, that can create a problem if you don't begin to get the rest of your teammates into the game because one of the reasons why losing or beat Long Beach Poly was because of the play of Myron Terrell. And they gave that foul to Dorrell Wright, just for the record. Dorrell Wright running floor on the left wing. That's Sheldon Wilson out top with the ball, feeds it inside to Donnell Wright. Donnell Wright turn around, doesn't go. Rebound comes down to number 33, Hodge. He's their big guy, he's their main gun. You'll hear us call his name a couple of times. Now we have another foul underneath. Looks like this one is going to go on Donnell Wright. Well, it's, it appears that the strategy so far in the first quarter at the 457 mark offensively for Losinger has been let Dorrell Wright go to work. Well, he, he's got four points, two of them coming from the free throw line, but no one else at this point has gotten involved in the offense. It's still early, basically early in the ball game, but uh, for Losinger to be successful, it cannot be just the Dorrell Wright show. They're gonna have to get other people involved and they convert two free throws and they take their first lead of the game. Looks like they overpassed it there. Now we got players all over the floor. We're gonna see what the call is. No foul call, just gonna call a possession and it's gonna go to the Olympians. 
Olympians get it inbounds to Myron Terrell. He swings it over to Wilson. Back to Terrell from the three-point arc. Doesn't even draw iron on that one. Golden Bears come out running. They got a three on two. They pull up with the jumper, and they hit it. And right now, they lead by a margin of seven to four. Losinger looks to answer, can't get it. Off the Terrell jumper. Golden Bears running again. This is Ross Green, number 15. That's Hodge, 33. Hodge goes inside. His shot doesn't go. And we're going to get a foul call. And that's going to be number two, if I'm not mistaken. If that's on Dorrell Wright, that's the indication. That is indeed number two, fans. So we're going to see an early substitution here. And we see the timeout being signaled for by the Olympians. So, still a rather slow start. Olympians jumped out front first to a four to nothing lead, and now they've been outscored by a margin of seven to nothing as the Golden Bears have taken the lead away, Dave. Well, anyone who thinks that because Temecula comes from way out, uh, almost close to Palm Springs or San Diego, way, almost two hours away, that thought that because they had to travel a long way that and because Losinger is playing at home, that this is going to be an easy win for Losinger. They are in for another think, as the old saying goes. This is a very good Temecula Valley team. They come in at 18 and 11. They won the Southwestern League, and they beat a Fontana team, which is highly ranked, ranked higher than they were in overtime. They're prepared and they're ready, and they're on a 7-0 run right now once uh, the three-point shot was hit by Stuart Shepard to get them on the board. They get it inbound, mishandling it a bit. Out on the perimeter is Hodge. He's looking to shoot, now gets it over to Green. Green cuts into the middle. He's cut off, got a foot in the key. Could have drawn the three-second call, doesn't get it. We're going to get a charge call. Looks like this is going to go against number 41, and of course, that is Stuart Shepard. Well, it's the second time tonight we've seen one of the Golden Bears leave their feet going uh, in the passing lanes and get called for a charge. Still early, lots of time. Over to Wilson now. Again, you got Wilson and Terrell at the guards. Ball being handled. That shot put up, it doesn't go. I believe that was Quentin Crooks from distance. That was number 23. Quentin with a couple of big baskets the other night. Of course, they've had to take Dorrell right out with the two fouls. And now in comes Demetrius Doby making his first appearance of the night. And Temecula Valley bringing in the lanky six foot eight, Josh Bomar, Bomar Brain with the ball. Bomar number 42 in your program. That's Ross Green with the handle out top. That shot knocked away by Donnell Wright. Good defensive play there by Wright to get it out of bounds. Golden Bears, of course, coached by Rico Thompson. His assistant coach is Andy Thompson. They get it in bounds. Excellent defensive play by the Olympians. Rebound's going to go off the hands of Bomar out of bounds. So to go over to the Olympians, we've got 301 left here in the first. As you see, Terrell bring it up. And they've had to play now a couple of offensive possessions without Dorrell Wright. Let's see so how they adjust. The crooks. Oh, a snowbird blown that time. But second chance put up and in by Donnell Wright. Good follow of his shot that time by Wright. Let's set the losing her defense. Losing her showing a man defense right now. Temecula running guys off a lot of screens. Olympians get to it again. Can't control it. You got Donnell Wright pushing it up the floor. Maybe the better decision here is to give it off to the guard. Let your ball handler bring it up. Donnell, of course, thought he had a break opportunity there. And make no doubt about it, he, he actually he is, a, is a very capable ball handler. That one got away from him. 
Hand in the face, rebound taken down by Demetrius Dobie. He gives it off to a guard, gives it off to Wilson. Now back over to Terrell. Terrell with it, Terrell's jumper goes up, a little short. Crooks comes down with it, gives it back over. Terrell steps into the lane, looks like he was fouled on the play, no call, but he puts the shot up and in, and the Olympians take the lead back, eight to four, as they've now gone on a four nothing scoring streak of their own. Bomar shot from the outside, doesn't go, fouled in, no call though. Ref didn't see it, and it's gonna be Olympian basketball. I'll cut the ref some slack on that one. His vision was obstructed. I could see what he saw, and definitely with the players there, he didn't see it. Olympians fortunate, though, to come out with the 135. Left here in the first, they lead by a score of eight to seven in a low scoring first quarter. Shot clock down to 20. Terrell drives the lane. His shot doesn't go, but there's a whistle underneath. Looks like it's gonna be on the shot. Looks like they're calling that foul on Ross Green. Ross Green with his first personal. He has yet to mark from the field and you saw a good high pick set outside that time by Donnell Wright allowing Terrell to drive. Gets him a trip at the, to the line where he misses the first. Head coach Russ, check that Rico Thompson. Just saw him there a second ago on your screen. Second one doesn't go either. We'll make it noted that now they're gonna have a tough foul on the Olympians, contesting the rebound. They're gonna give that foul to number 23, Quentin Crooks. Five team fouls are losing her, 123 to go, quarter number one. Of course, foul, team fouls, unlike the NBA in high school, carry from quarter to quarter. So, good defensive play there by the Olympians. They come down with it. They break it up, nice inside pass, gets away from Crooks, wasn't expected. Zip pass there from Myron Terrell. Now Ross Green tried to go behind the back and threw it away. Lipkins playing good denied defense. Once again, Terrell, excellent ball handle. Woo, nice crossover. Who's that crossover remind you of, Dave? That's a Tim Hardaway, I'll bail you out. Shot doesn't go, Crooks comes down with it. His shot doesn't go, Crooks goes up again, gets the follow. And now the Olympians lead by a score of 10 to seven. Referee says no call there, and that's a good no call. The Olympians playing real aggressively. Hodge's shot, not Hodge, rather put up from the outside green. Now we're gonna get a foul on the inside. No basket, looks like this is gonna go against Quentin Crooks. Couldn't see the complete signal, but from what we could see, it looked like Crooks. Yeah, that's gonna be number two for Quentin Crooks. And big Josh Bomar to the line with 19 and 6 10 seconds to go. L the loud losing our Olympian cheerleaders. And I'll tell you, they put on a show the other night. I gotta give them their props. They went down to Poly and they gave the losing their fans a real lift. They were a very spirited bunch, did an outstanding job. I'm gonna try to, at halftime, get a word in off camera with the um, head of the losing her cheerleaders, I believe she is. I know she was a former cheerleader here, and I think she's graduated and assumed the position as um, head of the cheerleaders. Anyway, we've got seven seconds left. Losing her has the ball, leading by 10 to seven. They're on a six nothing scoring spurt. Here's the show. show. They don't get a shot off. Mental laps right there cost them. But after one quarter in a game of spurts, Losinger leads by a score of 10 to seven on Lawndale's Community Cable, Channel 22. Well, you're right, Rufus spurts the word, a four nothing spurt for Losinger, then a seven nothing spurt for Temecula Valley and uh, then losing her with a six nothing spurt for the 10-7 lead at the quarter. Is she from Temecula Valley yeah, with a gum in the mouth? Or is she from here in Lawndale? Let's ask Tom, uh, Tom or General Tom Strick Fadden if he knows. Well, speaking of Lawndale, Lawndale Living can be seen right here on Lawndale Community Cable Channel 22. Check your guide, check your listings for Lawndale Living only on Lawndale Community Cable Channel 22. 
as you look at some of the Temecula Valley fans. I thought it was cold out in Temecula, California, but it's actually more desert. They're closer to Palm Springs out there off the I-15. Takes about two hours to get there. And uh, they're a gentleman who's been to a couple of Allman Brothers concerts doing uh, the PA system here tonight. Yeah, that's Matt Carver, folks. I can tell you Matt's a fixture around here. I was talking to Matt last week. As I've told you on more than one occasion, and I say it with a great deal of pride, I've been around here about 16 years myself, and I tell you, Matt Carver's been here every day that I was here, and I think he told me he's been here twice as long. But, uh, I mean, a real fixture around losing her high school and a friend of Channel 22's production crew. I mean, this guy knows every inch of this campus, inside and out, and where every electrical fixture is and how to get it fixed. Myron Terrell's three-point shot put up and in. Some think there may have been a travel on the play. Got a foul call as it looks like Donnell Darnell Wright maybe drew uh, elbow from Bomar. That's what they're saying. Bomar dipped the shoulder and threw an elbow to boot. So now losing her leads by 13 to seven as they've gone on a 9-0 scoring run here. They dip it inside, they try to get over to Fioni. Gonna be a three second. That one's easy for a ref. Normally that first pass goes in, if that guy passes it out, that's too much time. And now, we're gonna see one of the big contributors from the other night, Daryl Street coming on. Street played huge minutes for the Olympians. Demetrius Doby goes off. Let's set the losing the line up for you because we've got a couple of guys out there we don't normally talk about. You got 42, Tioni, 34, Daryl Street. That shot put up from the perimeter by Ross Green. That's a three-pointer. Makes it a 13-10 game. And he's had 52 three-pointers this year. If he gets hot, look out. So you got Wilson, Terrell. View momentarily blocked by some fans walking by. Anyway, you got Daryl Street, Donnell Wright, Wilson and Terrell, and Falo Tioni for the Olympians. And uh, Falalo Tioni just committing that foul to put losing her over the limit now. So Bomar, Josh Bomar to the free throw line. Remember the old Bomar brain computer from the early 70s. Bomar's first shot up and in. You see it tonight, Dr. Russ Thompson, the principal in losing a high school seat at about two seats to our left second, here tonight. Second shot doesn't go, rebound taken down by Street. No call there. Terrell loses it. And running, they're gonna think that there should be a call no call against the Olympians, no goal 10. That shot put up and in by Sheldon Wilson. So the Olympians now lead by a score of 15-11. And it looked like the last time Donnell Wright took the angle to bother Ross Green, made him have to alter that shot. That rebound taken down by Donnell Wright ball was slapped out of his hand and the official on the play, Dennis Lockyer, gives it over to the Golden Bears of Temecula. Well, at some point tonight, we're gonna have some replays and that last uh, play on the fast break by Ross Green when he came down. And uh, the reason why I missed the layup was because of the fact that Donnell Wright kind of took an angle from him. That shot put up and in from the perimeter. That's Green. Dave, you talked about Green a little bit early now. He's a key performer for him. He's made a couple of big baskets here in the second quarter, and it's now a one-point game. We're just under six minutes, fans. It's 15-14. On the floor for the Olympians is Chris Duran out at point. Duran up top, and they're going to give him the travel call. Well, you mentioned Ross Green. He averages 18 a ball game, and he is the leading three-point shooter on the team. He also was Southwestern League Player of the Year. 
That shot from three-point range, it goes. That's Ross Green again, and he gives Temecula the lead back. Their first time leading since it was 7-4, it's now 17-15. And he took the look and just drained it. That's a three three-pointers now for him on the night. Losing, of course, right now with a bit of a handicap as they're having to play Duran shot from the outside. Inside the arc, however, it goes, and we've got ourselves a tie ball game. I was about to mention, and over at the scores table, we see Dorrell Wright getting ready to come back in. Well, we've got a three-point shooting frenzy right now by Temecula. Somebody has to come back for the ball. Again, that's the inexperience of a guy like Chris Duran being on the floor. Something I tell my guys all the time, the point guard never leaves the ball. And here you got Duran as a point guard. Don't mean to knock the kid fans, but explain it to you so you understand what happened. The point guard left the ball. Well, that's why we're glad to have you here, Rufus, because you see, I can only do play-by-play. -play. I can't explain it that way, but you can explain it, and you also do a little homer play-by-play. -play. But a point well taken that uh, you've got to pay attention to where you are. You're in the third round of the playoffs, basically, quarterfinal round. And that's one of the things that the coach was concerned about, the uh, coach Reggie Morris Jr. He wanted his team to have to be alert tonight to realize where they are and you can't make those kind of mistakes. Well, Temecula Valley, the three-point shooting coming alive for Ross Green in his quarter with his 11 points. Uh, Stuart Shepard, as you just saw, hit that three. Losing Olympians, one three tonight for Myron Terrell. And it has not been an excellent perimeter shooting game so far for losing her. They haven't taken a lot of perimeter shots. But it's a close game. 2017, Temecula with the three-point lead here in quarter number two. And as we mentioned before the timeout, a couple of subs uh, going to get back in the game. I believe Losinger will get Dorrell right back in the game, playing with two personal fouls. 4.53 to go, quarter number two. And now you see the guards coming back to the ball. That's Myron Terrell. And the Temecula defense quickly retreats. Durrell operating out top. Dorrell Wright showing the high post on the wing. Is, I mean, I'm sorry, not Dorrell Wright. There was Donnell Wright with the high post. They look to get it out. That shot put up, it doesn't go. Wright has to give ground. Doesn't want to pick up that third foul here with four and a half left in the first half. Bomar with it now. Gives it over to number 41. His shot blocked out of bounds and saved. And we're going to have a foul on the play with the block was Dorrell Wright. And the foul is going to go against number 13. That's Tyler Combs. And I noticed that time on defense for losing her, they were very aware of where Ross Green was. Ross Green tried to get through a screen to get open for a shot, but not able to do so. So they're being very careful. He's hit those three three-pointers in a row. That'll draw the defense's attention. Wilson with the ball. Wilson feeds it down to Kelsey Bars, gets it back out top. Losing her again, had a bit of a problem. Let's see, they're gonna get a charge call. This is gonna go against number two, Sheldon Wilson, I believe. Now, I'm not the coach the way you are, but what is it they say about leaving your feet not, not leaving your feet on the pass? never leave your feet to pass. And we've seen that never. three times tonight, twice with Temecula Valley, and now for the losing her Olympians at the 403 mark of quarter number two. Play a control foul if you wonder why they don't shoot, even though losing her is in the penalty. Losing her now showing full court press. They feed the post. Nice steal. Yeah. Shot put up and in off the feed from Myron Terrell to Dorrell Wright. That shot put up from the outside, boy, you're right. Number 15, Ross Green has heated up, and it's now a four-point lead. It's off of Green, will be losing her basketball. Well, he's got 14 now and four consecutive three-pointers, and looks like he's beginning to drop back further and further as he's shooting them. What do you do to stop a player when he's that hot? Well, you got, all you can do is man up on him is the first thing and try to play some decent denied defense. This shot put up from outside doesn't go. 
Losing a fight for it, don't come down with it. Controlled by Bomar, number 42. Let's see how tight the defense this time is on Green. Green gets, gets loose. All he needs is a second. That shot doesn't go. Dorrell Wright comes down with it, gives a pass out. They're gonna get a travel call on the play. Coach Morris thinking there was a hand on the ball by Temecula. Losing it right now down by four. This is their largest deficit of the game. And I think what we've seen in the second quarter, we've seen some adrenaline for both teams. That shot doesn't go. Follow underneath, Wright has it. Donnell Wright puts the shot up. Here it comes off the glass. There you go, you turn around, you bring pressure after the quick basket. That's what losing it does, they fall out of it. They show it again. Good rotating defense by the Olympians, and that's it. But unfortunately, what it does, and now he's cooled off a little bit, that left Green open, losing a trapping outside, and we get a timeout call. Is that the indication? Temecula was going to score the basket, but the ref saw the timeout, so Losinger gets a break there with 2.23 left in the first half. Our guest, the Temecula Valley Golden Bears right now holding on to a slim two-point lead on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. Well, here at Losinger, a couple of teams that play uh, winter sports doing some things of note. The Losinger Olympians girls basketball team made it to the second round of the playoffs. They lost to Long Beach Wilson a couple of days ago, making it to the second round, and losing her soccer team, or, or football, as they say. In other parts of the world, it's football. Here, it's soccer. They uh, are still alive in the playoffs and doing well, but they had a major upset win just the other day. The losing her varsity boys basketball team trying to make it to the semifinals. They are in a tough one here tonight with 2.23 to go. Quarter number two at home. This. No matter how you slice it, this will definitely be the last home game they'll play this year. Ball comes out to Haji, drives the basket, shot blocked, and we got a tie up. Let's see, they're gonna say this foul occurred on the ground. Who are they gonna give it to? Looks like they're gonna give it to Doby. Well, if we, as, a, as we used to say, can I get a witness on that block shot? Uh, you got a replay coming up on? I think they'll, when we have a replay, they'll let us know. But right now, at the line, he's number 13. That's okay, let's keep it going. Number 13 is Tyler Combs. Three point lead right now for Temecula. Second shot goes back to a four-point lead. Just over two minutes left. That's Myron Terrell, his shot from the outside. It drops, two-pointer. Terrell showing pressure. There's Green, there's Green, he drives, his shot put up. Doesn't go, taken down by Dorrell Street. Dorrell Street running. Darrell went behind the back and lost it. You got to control the ball. Ball handling error there by the Olympians. Giving life after life that tap up and in. I think one of the Olympians tipped that one in, but they'll give credit to Bomar. Okay. Losing it, getting a little sloppy with the basketball right now. We saw the same thing happen in the third quarter with that furious poly rally when they came back from 15 down at the half to end the third quarter up by one at 53-52, attributed entirely to sloppy ball handling by the Olympians. We're seeing a replay of that right now, Dave. Well, in the poly game, Long Beach poly it was also more of the Long Beach poly full court pressure that was forcing Losinger to, at one point I said it looked like a college team playing against a high school team in that ball game. Losinger looked clueless for stages of that third quarter the other night. Tonight I don't think it's because Temecula Valley, the Golden Bears are putting on that much pressure defense. It's just that you saw a little ill-advised ball handle, your big man Dorrell Wright. He's tried to basically take matters into his own hands for the most part tonight, and you gotta get your other teammates involved. The big man, of course, Ross Green for Temecula, a ball handler, can do it from the backcourt. Wright has to do it from the post position, so a little difference. 
Darren Wright comes up with the steal. Again, I would ask, and I know that Dorrell Wright is a player of the year in the Ocean League with a 24.9 average and over 12 rebounds. However, it would appear he'd be well served at this point to put the ball in the hands of one of his ball handlers, run the floor, get it back. Uh, his three turnovers have come on ball handling, you know. And of course, uh, got the two fouls early in the first quarter. So he goes to the line here. First one's good. Narrows the deficit to three now. We've got a minute 27 left in the first half. Losinger finding themselves at home, but in a dog fight. Losinger comes down with the rebound. Another sloppy pass, got in step to it. What call do we get? We don't get any goaltending call to Mecca who thinks there should have been. Quite frankly, I do as well. Now you got Darnell Wright coming out. He's going to take this one. He goes up and in. And Wright just heard his back fans. Wright slipped down. You see him there. Losing it will need to give a foul. Wright went to the floor, came up gimpy. Temecula is going to go to the line. I think you'll see him coming out pretty soon. He's looking to shake it off. There's a minute left. Well, interesting sequence. The foul called on the block that time. And that's, I believe, they got Sheldon Wilson. So Segismar goes to the line. Now we have the referee talking to Bomar and Wright. Can't exactly see what it is, but normally what happens when you see guys standing there jostling, you go ahead and get it under control uh, right away. And it looks like that's what the official did. Free throw, up and in. That's number three at the line. That's Ray Sejasmar. Sejasmar's second shot. Up, comes out. Right up on the board. Wright gives it off to Myron Terrell. Terrell zips it over to Donnell Wright. He gives a ball fake. Gets it out to Dorrell Wright. Dorrell Wright looking in. Zips it back over to Myron Terrell. Now to Sheldon Wilson coming around the left side. Wilson, crossover behind the back. His shot put up. He was touched. No call. That shot put up and in by Dorrell Wright. No over the back call. Rico Thompson asking himself, how does a guy come from behind and get that? And there's no over the back call. I'm going to question the judgment of the ref. Now we're going to have this call. Let's see what this is going to go against. This call is going to go against number 22, Donnell Wright. And you got 19.9. Coach, from you, I get, quite frankly, I get both of my guys out who are in foul trouble at this point. Well, that's that's probably uh, as you take a look, Darnell Wright with two, Dorrell Wright with two, on the court for the losing Olympians. And that's now yep. 15 points for Ross Green. Well, instead of substituting for the big man, Coach Morris substitutes for a small guy as he takes Terrell out and brings Duran in. Duran again. Leaves the basketball, and maybe that's his assigned duty. But right now, you've got Durrell Wright with it, 12 seconds and counting, left in the first half, losing her down by a score of 30 28. Five seconds, Durrell Wright, three pointer. It goes, and that's going to end the first half with losing her on top, courtesy of a Durrell Wright three pointer. With under two seconds left in the first half, losing your leads by, a, by the slimmest of all margins, Dave, 31 30 on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. As you see, the Temecula Golden Bears head for the locker room. And their coach, Rico Thompson, saying something to one of the officials. Maybe didn't like the fact that he thought that there should have been some goaltending call there on a couple of the shots that were knocked away by the Wright brothers, Donnell and, and Doral Wright. But overall, a rather intensely played second quarter. 
And with 16 minutes to go, it's anybody's ball game. Should be a very good second half here Folks, on Lawndale's Community Cable. Thank you, Dave. We're going to regroup here at second for at halftime and invite you back to enjoy second half action on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22 in conjunction with the good folks over at Hawthorne's Community Cable Channel 22. All right, fans, we're back here on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22 for second half action in the quarterfinal round of the 2003 CIF Boys Southern Section Playoffs here at Lou House as the losing Olympians come out of the locker room with a one-point lead, Dave. One-point lead, I should say, 31-30. Here to inbounds right in front of our camera position, number 12, Kelsey Bars out on the floor with them, number 10, Myron Terrell. Over in the deep corner, we've got Dorrell Wright, Demetrius Dolby is out on the floor, and Sheldon Wilson for the Olympians. Wright looking to be none to wear. That shot from Wilson put up from the outside doesn't go. Wright gets it, Wright goes up inside. His inside shot doesn't go. Demetrius Dolby comes down with it. He's fouled on the play. Good call there by the official. They call it on the ground. So it'll be losing a ball out of bounds, but it will be a team foul against the Golden Bears, the black and gold clad Golden Bears from Temecula Valley. And that's gonna be number three on David Hodge, number 33, and that's a key factor because at the half, Temecula Golden Valley coach Rico Thompson said he wanted to establish more of an inside game that they didn't have in the first half. Well, they're not gonna be able to do it with a big man with three fouls. That shot put up and in by Myron Terrell, two-pointer. Had one foot inside the line, losing her knees to get back. That shot blocked by Dorrell Wright. Wilson shot from the outside, put up, losing her look in the run. Don't get the basket there. They get back, they got numbers defensively. Three-pointer put up, it doesn't go. Flopper Roo there by Ross Green. Referee disdains it on the baseline to Dorrell Wright. Doesn't go, comes off action fast and furious right now. Once again, you got Green down knee. Green's pinned on the baseline. Looked like there was a travel there. The Temecula's player went up. And we're gonna have a blocking call go against number 13 for Temecula, and of course, that's Tyler Combs. Coach what? Reggie Morris there, barking out instructions to his squad. I tell you, this first minute and 20 seconds of the second half, man, they were moving pretty fast here, Dave. And they're, they're pumped. They are, they are definitely up for this one. I think they're gonna take care of a wet spot on the floor. At the half, Reggie Morris, Jr., said he wants to see his team play more in control. He knows that they want to run the ball, but Temecula is not giving them a chance to do it. So he wants them to play a little smarter and in control. And we told you Rico Thompson, head coach of Temecula Valley, wants to see his team go to the low post more. Well, Ross Green, their big low post player, has to check out, not Ross Green, rather David Hodge with three fouls. Josh Bomar comes back in. He wants them to be a little more physical, he wants them to establish that inside presence. Ross Green with 16 points at the half, and uh, he had four three-pointers in that second quarter. So they've been doing it from outside, living on the outside shooting of Ross Green, but uh, they haven't been getting by on some of his acting ability. Uh, he's, he's been hitting the flop quite a bit tonight, and, and uh, anytime there's a little contact, uh, he and when Myron Terrell is dribbling against him, or uh, Sheldon Wilson, he does the flop, and he hasn't gotten the benefit of it thus far in the ball game. Myron Terrell handling out top, goes over the left side. Curl being run by Kelsey Bars. They get it inside. Demetrius Doby there. Breakdown by the Temecula defense. Losing and needing to get back, though. Temecula recovers very quickly in the offensive transition. And they've burned losing her a couple of times. That three-pointer put up from distance and in by Tyler Combs. Got a foul underneath. That's a good call. Let's see who it goes against. If it's on Combs, it's number four. Okay, no, they call it on number 15, Ross Green. 
Let me take a second just to give you a bit of a scoring recap here. In the first half, Darrell Wright and Myron Terrell led the way for the Olympians. Wright with 14, Terrell with seven. You had three Olympians as Kelsey Barr's free throw comes off long. You had three Olympians with two fouls, Dolby, Dorel Wright, and uh, Quentin Crooks. Interesting enough, I thought Donnell uh, Wright had three as well, but both scorebooks, Temeculus and uh, Losingers, and I might add that the Losingers scorekeeper, Juanika Bradley, does an outstanding job of providing us assistance both before the game, after the game, and particularly at halftime when we go over to uh, get the stats from her. And have a foul called on the play. Looks like they're going to give Losinger a break by calling this foul on number 12. And of course, we know that that's Kelsey Bars. Could easily have been called on Dorrell Wright, who was in the vicinity as well, Dave. Well, that time you saw a little hesitation by Ross Green. And uh, I guess in listening to Coach Rico Thompson saying they want to establish an inside presence, that time instead of just opting for the open shot, it wasn't totally open, but instead of trying to chuck it up for the three-pointer, he did drive to the hoop and was able to get himself to the free throw line as he's looking for point number 18 right now. Both of these teams, and it was interesting in the Temecula Valley paper as Ross Green converts a pair to make it back a one-point game. Now it was one point at the half, and it's still one point. That shot put up from the outside doesn't go too soon of a jump that time for Darrell Wright. This shot from the outside doesn't draw iron. Olympians running. Now they pull it out. Good decision by Myron Terrell. We got Darrell Wright out on the wing. Sheldon Wilson now playing guard up top here. Wilson looks to penetrate, pulls it back out. And for a split second, Myron Terrell who was setting up to shoot, took his eye off the ball momentarily, and it cost him a turnover. At 5.05, Mark Temecula Valley with a chance to regain the lead, losing her by one. A near travel there, not call. They swing it all the way across court. Losing her need to tighten up the defense just a little. Huge passing lanes for Temecula. They take advantage of it, and they go back on top at the 445 mark by a score of 37-36. Go on the baseline. That shot put up. No good. Temecula running again. This is number three with the ball handle for them. That's Sedgesmar. Sedgesmar on top being guarded by Terrell. That shot's gonna be put up, and it's good by number 13. That's Tyler Combe, and now losing her down by three. Four minutes left here. That shot doesn't go, you're gonna get a foul call. Foul's gonna go against Sedgesmar. No shot attempt on the play. It'll be losing her ball out of bounds. And they're going to get uh, losing her. It looks like they will send Donnell right into the ball game. But before they do, Temecula Valley will talk things over at the okay. 407 mark of quarter number three. If I can get a shot of them again, I'm looking over to the other over toward the Temecula bench. I know I see Coach Coach Norman's in the house as well. So well, ladies and gentlemen, what are they playing for tonight? If you're just tuning in, this is CIF Southern Section Division 1AA playoffs. Losing Olympians and Temecula, Temecula Valley Golden Bears. The winner here tonight, as you see Coach Joe House on, the, on your screen, the winner here tonight gets the winner of Ontario at Silverado. Now here's what happens. Uh, from the, if Losinger wins, this is the situation. If Losinger wins and Silverado wins, they would flip a coin. If Losinger wins and Ontario wins, it would be at on Ontario's choice. However, they will not be home games for either of the teams. Basically, the team that is designated the home team would get to pick an alternate site closer to its school. So if losing or were to win here tonight, which uh, that's not a guarantee, and of course, if they were to go on and face either one of those schools as the home team, the game would not be played at losing her. It would be played at a school in the area, 
And of course, if it winds up being Silverado or Ontario, it would be at an alternate school in one of those areas. Ontario, obviously, in Ontario, and Silverado okay. out in Victorville. We're back to live action, and we'll certainly recap that for you as it becomes necessary and appropriate. Olympians right now trailing by three, trying to get it back. Foul on the play. Down there, right shot. Doesn't drop for him. Right's okay, just a little frustration there at not getting the basket to go. May have got a bump or a knee to the back of the head or the neck as he went up on that one. Well, that's gonna be Josh Bomar with his third personal. We got a couple of big golden bears, Ross Green, Josh Bomar, David Hodge with three personal fouls and Tyler Combs as well as they're attacking him on in the second half. Donnell Wright's free throw up and in. Makes it a two point game now. And as we were making mention of among the other local notables in the house, we've got Coach Keith Norman, uh, former head coach over at Hawthorne High, along with the current head coach, Joe House. And I saw some other Cougar fans as well. And this is a good display of local hometown sportsmanship as we've got fans from the area coming out. This is an area event, fans. Now, here's Donnell Wright. He's fouled on the play. They're going to say he was in the act of shooting, so he's going to go to the line to shoot, too. I said Donnell. I meant Dorrell. Yeah, we thought maybe it should have been a flagrant is what my referee and sidekick here has to say. But the refs don't go for that, but they do say he was in the act of shooting the first one up and in. And that's four personal fouls on Tyler Combs. So David Hodge will have to come back in with three fouls for Temecula Valley. And that free throw gives Losinger a one-point lead. From losing, I'm not so sure I would press at this area of the court this stage. I'd get my guys back, because the problem has been just what you see there. And that's Ross Green scoring yet again. Green was high man at the half for Temecula. No surprise there to anybody. He had four three-pointers. Demetrius Doby gives it off to Terrell. This is Wilson. Wilson goes baseline. Wilson's shot knocked out of bounds. 19 on the shot clock. And David Hodge, your leading shot blocker, coming into tonight's ball game, also the leading rebounder. All these teams we see the rest of the way, fans, are all contenders. There are no pretenders here. That shot comes off, and it's going to go. Boy, I tell you, man, the ref really, <laughs> you know, Gives you a test. He takes a long time to make that call. Losing it now showing full court pressure on every play. And let's see if they get beat again, do they? What's the call here? There's going to be a foul call against the Olympians. That foul looked like it's on number two, Sheldon Wilson. So losing it right now. Attempting to employ the full court defense, full court pressure, I should say, but it's worked against them both times as at the line shooting is Sedja Smar. He hits the first. So if that doesn't work, Coach Rufus Washington, what do you do? Well, again, at this point, I, you know, I, I mean, if you see there, well, I, I won't go into it yet, but obviously I think that Coach Morris, who's no, who knows this team a lot better than I do, will make, will make the adjustment that he thinks best. This shot from straight ahead, put up, doesn't go. Rebound taken down by Temecula. Losing her has numbers back. That shot from way downtown, and that's gonna be an out of bounds. Touch the basket supports, and that automatically constitutes an out of bounds, and it'll go over to the Olympians who trail by three with 2.30 left here in the third, fans, our score, 43-40 in favor of Temecula. Of course, we know the Olympians can erase that in a heartbeat. There it is right there. That shot put up, doesn't go. Rebound taken down by right, no foul there. Demetrius Doby underneath. He goes up and in and scored the basket. We've lost microphone. Somebody help me here. I don't have a mic. 
Well, are, are you having a problem with Rufus right now? Uh, okay. Well, if well, we're told by the truck guard, okay. Let me carry it. We've got a little bit of a technical problem right here. We're trying to work on it. Demetrius Dobe, you just saw get fouled. He's on the free throw line trying to complete that three-point play. Not able to do it, but it's going to stay by way, or rather go to Temecula Valley with 2.07 to go, quarter number three. Having a little bit of technical difficulty. We hope to get it worked out. Rufus Washington and Dave Marks. I've Temecula with the ball in the front court, and they call a kick ball. They will, uh, Temecula fans in disagreement with the call, but apparently it's gonna go to the Losinger Olympians. There you see some of the Temecula crowd. Tom can hear you. Okay, I can't, okay, I can't hear Tom. Well, All right. we are, and I can't we've hear got our Dave. problems worked out, and I think, we should have Rufus back. The problem will be Rufus and I are gonna have a little bit of trouble hearing each other, but as long as you can hear Rufus, that's all that counts. So take it, take it away, Ruf. All right, well, thanks, Dave. Quick recap, it's going to be Temecula ball inbound underneath their own basket. They lead by a point. We're under two minutes, 158 left in the third, 43-42. Bomar with the handle. Bomar gives it off, they look inside, stolen by. Donnell Wright, Wright makes the wise decision this time. Picks it up, hands it off to Myron Terrell. His shot doesn't go. Wright scoops it underneath. Wright puts a shot up, his doesn't go. Demetrius Dobe on the inside, score the basket. Well, unlike the game against Long Beach Poly, losing or doing a lot better job in this game off the boards. Losing her now with the lead at 44-43. Green shot doesn't go, follow. Put up and in by Hodge. He's gonna score the basket, but let's see the foul call. They're gonna call the, fi the foul on Donnell Wright, it would appear. Score the basket for number 33, David Hodge, and Hodge will go to the line with a three-point opportunity. So, Hodge at the line with Temecula leading by a point. Losing the need to control here no matter what. That comes off. Donnell right with it. Wilson ball handling. Wilson needing to find one of his guys. Donnell right shot doesn't go. Rebound comes long and the ball is thrown off of Demetrius Doby, 105 here in the third remaining. Losing and showing man to man full court pressure. Except you can't get beat on the man. They don't come down with the rebound and we're gonna get a foul call inside against the Olympians. Looks like that foul is gonna go on number 23 Quentin Crooks. Now going off the floor for the Olympians is Dorrell Wright with 55 seconds left here in the third. Losing her needing to control the board. A lot of hands underneath. Losing her now running. Lots of time left. They're only down by a point. We got. Do we have a whistle? Yes, we do. Right now, the action is so loud and furious, they call that foul on green. Indication is that it's on number 15, 44 seconds, 44.4 to be exact. Well, it's uh, some Tuioni fans in, in the stands <laughs> playing, of course, football and basketball. Interesting because Ross Green and Dorrell Wright, two stars of both teams, are going to go into the fourth quarter, both with four personal fouls. So Crooks at the line, shooting two, I believe. Trent, no, it was a one. 
But Tione comes down with it. Tione goes up, it doesn't drop. Number 22, Darnell Wright goes up. Clock never moved, clock still hasn't moved. Now we need, clock finally starts to move. That shot from the outside doesn't go. Luzio comes down with it. They've got the clock, they can hold it here. They lead by one. If you're losing her, all you want is one shot. They score the basket as Wilson makes it. And now we got the wheels coming out for Temecula as they're jawing at the ref. Whoa! A delayed call there goes against Quentin Crooks. Looked like a good steal, Dave. Referee decides there was a little too much contact. Well, I don't think it's the fact that the call was made, but as you said, the delay is probably what, what is the annoying thing about it. 14 seconds left in the half. Losinger needing to play good D. That, oh, tough shot there. They need to get it inbounds and push it up. They've got a chance, five seconds. Lead by one, attack. That shot from the outside, it goes! Three-pointer for Sheldon Wilson! Gives Losinger a four-point lead to end the third quarter at 51-47. Tom, if you're in the truck and can hear me, I can't hear anything from you guys. We're just gonna roll with it. Or you can talk to Dave and Dave will talk to me. But fans, again, all the playoff action you can ask for two games in a row. We're seeing it all right here on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22 in conjunction as we see the replay there on Sheldon Wilson's end of the quarter three-pointer to give the losing Olympians a four-point lead as they're looking to force a semifinal game somewhere we don't know where. Dave will give you all that at the end of the game when it's more relevant than it is right now. Well, first things first, we gotta win the game, Dave. Well, there's that we again, but I'll let you get away, away with that. Uh, yeah, they, uh, the, the fact that I can hear you, first of all, and I started to say, if, if, it's, if you remember the episode of Star Trek when Spock lost his, his sight, but they gained the life of one of the crewmen and he called it a fair and equitable trade, I guess the fact that we have the replay back, but R Rufus has lost part of his mic, I'll go with what first officer Spock, we'll call that a fair and equitable trade. But as far as the basketball game, four points heading into the fourth quarter, eight minutes to go. This is a game with some big adrenaline and both coaches with some decisions to make because both of their stars, Ross Green for Temecula Valley and Dora Wright for losing are playing with four personal fouls. But there is nothing but the off season left if you don't do it in this next eight minutes. Losing the fans calling for a little defense as we start the quarter. Losing the crowd hollering defense, that three-pointer put up and in by Stuart Shepard makes it a one-point game. Now, despite that acrobatic three-pointer by Sheldon Wilson, for the most part, Losinger has not had that. The three-pointer is part of their weapon tonight. Temecula Valley has. That shot put up and in by Terrell, the handicap I'm working with right now, fans. Okay, I, all right, I hear, I hear, I'm, I have, it's in and out right now. I have some audio, now it is back. Great job, as always, by our crack staff here at Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. That shot put up from the outside by Raw Screen. It goes, we've got ourselves a tie ball game, fans, at 6.50 left. 53 all. And he's got 23 points now. Terrell's three-pointer, that's gonna be offline, taken down by the Olympians, put up and in inside. That looks like Demetrius Dobie. Our vision was blocked. I'm gonna say it was Dobie for the outstanding block that he made the other night. Now we got a whistle on the play. Holding call gonna be called on Tioni, Tuioni. And for the linebacker, that's his second personal. Stopping the clock, 6.34 to go, losing her by two. Losing Olympians for the most part, of, as we said, have not had the three-point outside weapon consistently tonight. 
that Temecula Valley has, and that could turn out to be one of the decisive factors. That free throw put up and in by Tyler Combs. Combs to shoot the second free throw. One point ball game. Combs second one, good as well. Terrell brings it across the timeline for the Olympians. Terrell with the handle out top, screen set by Donnell Wright. Terrell looking for a hole in the zone, can't find it. They get it over to Donnell Wright, 18 on the shot clock. Back over here to Wilson, his shot put up. Tough shot there, they got numbers. Losinger gets back though defensively. Good defensive transition by the Olympians that time. He only lets them get inside. They let him control the offensive board. A view block. That shot goes up. Losing it. Can't come down with it. And score the basket right now. I think coach is going to decide he's got to get a bigger team in here. Well, of course, he that's one rebound. But losing her had several shots at it. Couldn't come down with it. Gonna have to decide how long he's gonna go without Dorrell Wright. That shot put up and in. They only give him a two on it. Ties it up at 57. That was Myron Terrell. He's gotta have some tough man defense now. That's a good hand in there. Slow it down, slow it down. Pick it up, slow it down. Okay. There we go, score the basket for the Olympians. That's Demetrius Doby. Losing her back on top, five minutes left. 59-57, now we're gonna have a foul call, this foul, good hustle foul. It's gonna go against Wilson. Well, so, at the 5.02 mark, you see over by the scorer's table, they're gonna get Dorrell right back in the ball game. While he's shooting his free throw, Dave, let me also mention, and I wanted to get this in earlier, wanna acknowledge the losing girl cheer squad, the flag team, the drill team, and the song team, all of whom have entertained us the last two games. They're under the expert tutelage of a former member of the Losing Your Cheer squad. Now she's their coach, and that is Shante Murray. That first free throw put up and in by, of course, Ray Sedgesmar. Makes it a one-point game, and they have done an excellent job of keeping the crowd pumped up. The free throw missed. Donnell Wright comes down with it, gives it off to Myron Terrell. Losing her, looking to go where they've never gone before. That, of course, being the semifinals at the CIF playoff. That shot from way downtown doesn't go, but the follow by Donnell Wright does go. And it's now a three-point game for the Olympians. They're picking up at half court. That's Sedja Smart with the dribble being defended by Wilson. Over on the other side, you have Ross Green being defended by Myron Terrell. You can't let Green get loose. That's a travel. Don't get a call. Does losing or get a rebound? Yes, they do. Donnell, Donnell Wright with the big rebound. Going for it. That's Demetrius Doby with it underneath. Is he fouled? No. Ball loose. There's a scramble. Ball's on the floor. Can the Olympians get it? You got. A timeout being called by Temecula Valley. And you take that. That timeout that they were forced to use there may be critical down the stretch. I know losing or one in possession of it, but they did force the Temecula timeout, Dave. Well, so uh, the point goes in the opposite way that could wind up being crucial for Temecula down the stretch with about 4.03 to go. 20-second timeout taken, of course. Uh, the choice between losing the possession and, and keeping it key at this point in the three-point ball game. And figured it was going to go down to the wire. If the losing Olympians are going to be successful, two things that they're going to have to do, of course, turnovers are a key. They've done a pretty good job protecting the ball. But they're going to have to get some sort of outside presence. Somebody is going to have to hit a big three-point shot or two. And the ball game win, in the win against Long Beach Poly, it was Myron Terrell who had a couple of big ones. He had five three-pointers that night. He's had a couple of two-point field goals, but uh, someone is going to have to get hot from behind the arc to make them come out of that zone that they that uh, Temecula Valley has been playing. 
losing her, pressuring full court now, pressuring the ball. Good defense there by Wilson. Wilson on Sedgesmar. Wilson down in a low crouch. Losing her going. Man to man. They're letting guys break free, though. That shot put up. Rebound taken down. Once again, you got to bring it down and handle it. Looked like he might have been that, hit, but nothing called that time. That ball now worth its weight and goal on every possession. We've got 333. There's a turnover. Give it up. Should be an easy deuce for the Olympians, and it is. Now we're going to get another timeout. Looks like there's a signal for a timeout. We have an official timeout taken. Yeah, the official is indicating he's going to call a timeout. You got an injured. Is that Green? Green is down on the floor. I said it the other night when the young man from Polly went down. The one thing I never want to see as a parent, as a coach, as an announcer, as a fan of this game, I never want to see anybody get injured. So my hope right now is that Green is able to get back up, just like the guy from Polly did the other night, maybe take a quick breather and get back into this game. Well, well. Well taken, Rufus. Nobody here is, uh, as you see him grimaces that they, they grab the back of that uh, calf there. Nobody here getting paid. These are high school students. They're playing it for the fun and for the love of the game. They still have to have to be back in class the next day. And uh, you don't want to see any kind of injury to somebody that young with uh, the rest of their future ahead of them. But he's had, of course, a fine ball game. Ross Green, 23 points tonight, playing with four personal fouls. But at this stage of the game, 319 to go, of course. There's going to be a lot of contact, a lot of emotions right here. Five-point game still, anything could happen. Green, Green still hasn't come back to his feet yet. While we've got a moment, I want to ask the truck. We've got a handheld mic here. Is this mic for a post-game interview, or is it just a backup mic? It's for a post-game interview, so it'll... Well, we were going to have... Right. We, if we got Joe House or... Principal Dr. Russ Thompson over here. We were going to use that that microphone. Principal uh, Dr. Russ Thompson passed in front of us, and a good hand being employed here for Ross Green, getting a, getting a nice hand from the crowd. And it's Green. been a good crowd tonight. Green trying to walk it off. Still, still seems to be in some measure of pain. They've got six guys on the floor right now. Somebody has to go off, and now one of Green's teammates tells him, that he's been substituted for. And so then, that's gonna mean Sedgesmar in number 13. Sedgesmar is number three. Sedgesmar and Tyler Combs are gonna have to handle the ball duties. Temecula has gone big. They've got in here now, they got Hodge, they got Bomar on the floor, and they've got Shepard. And Stuart Shepard is the three point threat. Sedgesmar pushes it up. Let's see what the impact. Now we see limping back to the, uh, is Green going to get a foul called on Demetrius Doby, body foul there uh, as he rode the Temecula player across the lane. But again, doing what I like to see a guy do, man, when you come in that lane, that's my house. And he rode him right on out of there. Ref called him for the foul. Losing her, of course, out of fouls here as that's the 19th foul against the Olympians. Still a one and one. Olympians leading by five fans. 309 left here. And now you got Donnell Wright, Dorrell Wright rather, who's going to the locker room. And keep in mind, Dorrell Wright is not 100% healthy. He's looked better here tonight, but still having back problems. Sean Green, make that Ross Green back in the ball game. So he had a just very quick rest for Temecula Valley. And at the 309 mark with the Dorrell Wright headed off the court and out of the gym. Quentin Crooks will have to come in with Stuart Shepard on the line. And Shepard's first free throw is good. Makes it a 63-59 score now. And I tell you, if I'm uh, losing her, another stoppage in play as the referee goes over to talk to coach Reggie Morris. Not quite sure what that is, unfortunately, from my vantage point. We can't get a handle on what the discussion is. Now we see Wright coming back in. I think the ruling's going to be, okay, he had to change a jersey. Must have had blood on the uniform. Normally when you see a guy change his uniform, and that's what's happened. No, said he's gonna wear number 55 Durrell. right now, so that's what it was. He had to go back into the locker room. 
which is uh, just outside this uh, gym, right next to our, our truck. Actually, I think he got that from Tom, Tom had that in the, tr Tom's trick bat in the general had that inside the Lawndale, tr Lawndale van. And, and now the issue is whether or not he has to sit out one play. That's what we're going to see. He does have to sit out a play is the ruling of the official. In other words, the ball has to become live in order for him to come back into the game. Second free throw is good. Now the question is whether he can come back in now, and the indication is that he can. So, Dorrell Wright comes on the floor. There he is, fans number 55. I know you're accustomed to seeing him in uniform number three. Blood on the uniform by rule. Uniform has to be exchanged. So, he makes a quick change in the locker room. That uniform looks like it's about the size for General Tom Strickfadden. Lane penetration there to kick it back out. Myron Terrell thought about it. Wilson thinks about it. On the outside, now he goes up, put it in. Everybody contributing. That's Sheldon Wilson with the three-pointer. It's a five-point game, fans, 240. Left in the fourth. Losing her, holding on, looking to get to the semifinal round. That shot put up from the outside, a little short. Losing her doesn't come down with the rebound. All hands, the ball's still alive. Defensive rebounds right now. That would really hurt the Olympians, man. As they give up the basket, makes it 65-62. That shot put up and in by number 55. Who is 55? 55 is Dorrell Wright. That drive to the basket. They're gonna shoot two. Let's see what they call the foul on. Fouls on number, is it number one? Looks like he called a number 10, but I don't think that Myron Terrell could sky like that. I, I, I thought it was Demetrius Doby, but at any rate, we aren't sure. I'm being told it was number 10. You're right, that was the indication. That free throw by Green, up and in. Four point ball game. Green looking to make it three. Losing her, needing to control the defensive board. Another free throw put up and in by Temecula. Two minutes, under two minutes now. Losing her by three. And not sure what the call was. Five second count, thanks. My spotter here, none other than Branton Washington. He's in training in this game. That's a travel. And they asked for it the whole game. They finally get it. They're gonna score the basket and call it a goaltending against the Olympians. Now a five point deficit for Temecula Valley is nothing. They trailed by 15 points in their win against Fontana. So this is still quite a ball game right here at the 145 mark to go. Well, they've made that five point deficit now a one point game. Right shot up and in. He's not the Ocean League player of the year for nothing, fans. And the big time players step up in crunch time and that's what he just did. That's the travel. Out of bounds to the Olympians, you can take your choice. It was a travel to start with when you leave your feet with the ball in your possession. And now you're gonna get a timeout being taken by Temecula. Losing her leads by three. We've got 128 to go, fans. The house is rocking here at Lou House. Can they do it? Can they hold on? Can they go where they and Channel 22 have never gone before? And that is the semifinals of the CIF Southern Section 1 AA playoffs. Well, the first and third Monday of the month is coming up, and isn't that a good time to check out what's happening with the City Council at Lawndale? Lawndale Community Cable, Channel 22. You can see the City Council meeting, so find out what your City Council is doing only on Lawndale Community Cable, Channel 22. And setting the scenario, as you see the score, and time winding down, what is at stake here is a trip to the semifinals. And that would be against, uh, they would have to play the winner of Silverado and Ontario. Now, what would happen was the game, if losing or were to win, the game would have to be played at a neutral site. But what neutral site it will be played at will be dependent on a couple of things, and we'll try to make it as l less complicated as we possibly can. Silverado 
has already had two home games, so if it were to be losing her in Silverado, there would be a coin flip. If it were to be Ontario and losing her, the game would be decided, the game would be in the Ontario area, but not at their they, school. They, we're back to live action. I'm gonna have to step on you now. I know the fans wanna know that, but right now they wanna see the outcome of this one. Let's bring that to him as Dorrell right hounds it on the baseline. He goes up, his shot is short. Over the top, not called there. You got a minute and 12 left. Temecula with the ball, among other things. Obviously, they're guarding right at the three-point line. Let's see what happens. Do they get the big block again? It gets underneath. Rebound taken down by the Olympians. There you go. There was a reach, no call. Do we get a stop? Shot put up and in. Good feed. You need to get back. Losing or not getting back the way they should and they give up the easy basket. Breakdown by the Olympians. You can't celebrate. Score and get back. Here's a foul. Okay. That's a, still a three point game with 38.2 seconds left. Olympians going to the line again. It's a painful lesson to learn. Let's hope it doesn't hurt the Olympians. You cannot, it's a tough game, it's tight, Dave, it's close. Score the basket, understand these guys have to push it. You gotta get back on D. There's no time for celebration. This ain't the NFL, all right? Good point, <laughs> point well taken, Rufus, and quite emphatic, I might add, at 38 and 2, 10 seconds to go. Demetrius Dolby off the glass, makes it a four point game with 38.2 seconds left, fans. On the floor for the Olympians, Demetrius Doby, Sheldon Wilson, Myron Terrell, Donnell Wright, Dorrell Wright. Doby's second free throw comes off long. Donnell Wright fights for it. It comes to Dorrell. He got a foul and a basket. Folks, we might be going on right now. Dave, I think we can start to crank up the scenario for what's going to happen next, baby. The 33 and Although 17. we still only two Ross Green three-pointers from being tied up, this free throw by Donnell Wright, Dorrell, excuse me, fans, you have to pardon my excitement, can make it a three-point, a three-possession game, and it does. Losing Grinnell needing to get back in the defensive half court on defense. There's no need to play the ball up there, get back. That's what you, four Olympians on it, and you're gonna get Tyler Combs over the top. Losing is gonna go down here to shoot free throws. We got ourselves a seven point game. And fans, you can put a fork into Macula, they're done. 25 and 110 seconds to go. The crowd here behind us on their feet. And this is one of the more excited losing her home crowds that I've ever seen. And they could be 25 and 110 seconds away from the final four of the CIF Southern Section Division One AA. Moving on to the semifinals where the air gets very rarefied. Dave, you like to talk about teams you remembered. I can tell you this losing your team is starting to bring back to mind. And I'm an ACC fan and most fans know that they're bringing back to mind now the 83 North Carolina State Wolfpack who went into the final, in, into the tournament, quite frankly, with a losing record. They won the ACC tournament, and man, they won nail biters all the way to the national championship over Houston. Well, who can forget that year? The uh, five slamma jamma team of Guy Lewis in Houston and uh, Coach Valvano down there with the North Guy. I remember Valvano when he coached at Iona up outside of New York City, but. Yeah, that, uh, that was quite a team. I don't know if lose, losing Olympians, well, the game against Long Beach Poly, that the dramatic fashion. This uh, also ranks up there with a game that's pretty dramatic. Uh, each possession in the last two minutes being very important. Some of the losing are fans that some of Gualo uh, Tuioni's fans. And this uh, an incredible story right now. Only a couple of teams left alive, left standing after tonight in Division I AA. Losing her possibly two wins away from the Arrowhead Pond. General Tom Strick Fadden will have the Lawndale van backing it up down the ramp at the pond. For that to happen, losing her has to hold on to 25 and 110 seconds here tonight. 
and they would have to win a semifinal game at a site to be determined and against a school to be determined. Donnell Wright's free throw put up and in. Now an eight point game with 25 seconds left. Losing her wisely, double teaming. Ross Green, losing her comes down with it. Dorrell Wright with the rebound. He's fouled on the play by Bomar. Losing her now, knowing conclusively, without a doubt, emphatically, that this win is theirs. Fans, losing her is moving on to the semifinals of the 19, the 19, the 2003 CIF Southern Section Playoffs. Man, what an exciting night, Dave. We've had the luxury and the pleasure of seeing two exciting games, as you see. Dorrell Wright, yeah, that's right fans, number 55, that's Dorrell Wright. Made a jersey change late in the fourth, second free throw is good, losing it now leads by 10. The only thing in question now is the final margin. Sesamar's shot doesn't go, rebound taken down by Wright, he's pushing it up with six seconds left. They want to freak on him, there it is baby, I told you. <laughs> Dorel Wright to Donnell Wright, and they're gonna send Temecula Valley home with the long ride. There it was. We called it, fans, yet another major victory in the history of Losinger basketball. And now we're seeing, first of all, an exercise in sportsmanship as both teams will clap fans. Our final 80 to 68, an emphatic win and a great win for the losing a program. We're gonna cap it off, certainly fans, with an excellent display of sportsmanship. You're happy, you have every right to be, but let's celebrate the right way. Let's congratulate, first of all, the Temecula Golden Bears. They made the long trip up here, Dave. They didn't disappoint their fans in terms of their performance. I know they all leave, and they make that long ride back home disappointed, such is the nature of sports. But obviously they'll have another day, but right now this is a losing or win. Dave Marks. Well, for 27 minutes, it was a tight contest. It was a one-point game at the end of three quarters, but losing or Olympians with the composure down the stretch, particularly the last three minutes, and able to do what, uh, as he phones, as that, that gentleman phones his score in there, <laughs> headed, out, headed out of this uh, building. And that last play of the ball game, the play between the Wright brothers, the alley-oop, Dorrell to Donnell Wright, that, uh, that'll get back on the bus for Temecula Valley play. They've got uh, a long bus ride to get back to Temecula Valley, but they played a fine game tonight. And uh, it's kind of unbelievable. I think it's gonna take a few minutes for the losing Olympians to just digest this and realize where that they are headed. They are headed to the final four of the CIF Division 2A play. Playoffs. Well, let, let, let's let's get that right. Let's let's make sure we've got and it. As we yeah, go, so Division we One, see Coach Storm playoffs, are coming right? over. We made note of the fact that a number of fans, all the basketball fans here in the South Bay, no matter what uniform they've worn in uh, throughout the course of the season, they're over here. They've come out tonight to support the losing Olympians, and this truly is an area affair. This is this has become bigger than just Lawndale, just Losinger. It's about Hawthorne, it's about all the schools in the area. Fans, good things have happened. And we congratulate, again, the Olympians. As we prepare to give you some additional post-game comments, let us first of all, Dave, talk about the kind of game it was. It got off to a slow start. Who would have thunk when it was only seven points seven to four with four minutes left in the first that we'd end up with 80 points on the board and a total of 148 being scored in the game. But once the losing your engine got running, there was no shutting it down. It kind of, first quarter kind of reminded you of an old fashioned boxing match where you say the first couple of rounds, people are looking to feel their opponent out to see what the opponent's got. Well, they started picking up the intensity in the second quarter and then the ball game was on. You had Ross Green with uh, 12, points uh, from three-point land in that second quarter. They kind of cooled him off a little bit, if you can consider a 27-point night for him, cooled off, but they were able to check him a lot better and keep him from running off the picks. And uh, Temecula Valley in the second half was never able to effectively get the inside game going, which is what they wanted to do in the second half. But the losing Olympians, of course, 
They were able to pull away by playing an organized, a fairly organized fourth quarter, especially the last three minutes or so of that quarter. And this is the kind of composure you're going to need as the air starts to really get rarefied, heading on into the final four of this division, CIF uh, one AA playoffs. One win away from the Arrowhead Pond, one win away from going to the CIF state tournament. And there are a number of scenarios that will play themselves out over the next couple of days, Dave, in terms of where Losinger will be, who they will face. We don't know that right now, but the most important thing, again, is that they showed great team discipline. They came in with a game plan under the expert tutelage of Reggie Morris Jr., and they played their game out. A little bit of foul trouble early, made some substitutions. We thought that Dorrell Wright may have been hurt, but everybody contributed who took the floor. And as a result, in what was a tight game down to the last two or three minutes, and they literally pulled away in the last two minutes because we had ourselves a one-point ball game. In those last two minutes, they pulled away, and that, of course, enabled them to get out of here with the 80-68 to 68 win, which, as we say it, fans, and you can't begin to understand what this means to this school and this program, the fact that this has been their most successful season in basketball in many, many a year and perhaps forever in the history of the school. And yeah, they may have to start rent. They may have to rent a few school buses. Losinger will have about four days to rest to rest their wounds. Of course, uh, Dorrell Wright was not totally healthy tonight, so he's got he's got a couple of days to get his back together. But the scenario is simply this: they're going to play the winner of Silverado in Ontario. Now, according to what I had, uh, the way it goes in this in the, in the next round, well, the way it goes throughout these playoffs until the championship game is the team with the fewest amount of home games gets to play the game at home. And as it so turns out, if Losinger would have to play Ontario, Ontario would be the home team, but they would not actually play at home. They would play at an alternate school in the Ontario area. If Losinger winds up having to play Silverado, they would have to flip a coin. And in that case, if Losinger wins the coin flip, they would not play here at Losinger. They would play at an alternate high school somewhere in the area. And obviously, if it's Silverado, they play at an alternate high school in the Silverado area. If you, for you geography majors, Silverado is out close to Victorville. They're in that area. And I was told by somebody at our crack staff here at Channel 22 that Ontario is in Ontario, California. All right. That's out, out there off the 10 someplace. How about that? Fans, we got to go home, but before we go home, let us remind you one more time that Losinger moves on to the semifinals of the 2003 Boys Southern Section playoffs with a 80 to 68 win. Of course, you, you should know that this game will be broadcast on Sunday night at 8 p.m. on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. And uh, by that time the game is aired, they will know who they're going to be Of course, you playing. can go on. The internet to check it out at www.lawndellcity.org. Let me tell you one time, fans, because you really ought to thank this crew for the fine job they do. I see you with the hat. You can put it on. First of all, this, our executive this is, this director yours, producers, Tom Strickfadden, working camera, Joe Shaw, Paul Knapp, Alonzo Gonzalez, Eric Chavez, Alan Pineda, Mario Terrazas, and I should mention, and you know by now, that the good folks over at Hawthorne Cable Usage Corporation, big supporters of this broadcast, led by Larry Bender, Chris Lay. So that's our crew, folks. I'm Rufus Washington. This is Dave Marks. I'm going to sneak him in here on camera real fast. This, of course, is my son, Brad, and you'll be seeing and hearing about him one day. But this is our crew. Man, it's been fun. Two great games. We know you'll join us for the next one. We're going to be there. And for everybody at Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22, I'm Rufus Washington saying peace and good night.